Hi, welcome. This video covers high cortisol in menopause and the symptoms that are partially caused by it or exacerbated because of it. A few of those symptoms are some of the most unwanted, frustrating, and commonly complained about changes when hormones shift, and lowering high cortisol can help improve or erase those menopause annoyances and better your quality of life. So after I cover the symptoms, I'll offer some tips on how to get cortisol under control and feel better. Before I list the symptoms though, let's talk about what cortisol is and why it's often elevated in peri and postmenopause. Cortisol is a hormone produced by the adrenals to help our bodies with certain functions like stress control, sleep, metabolism, immune function, and blood sugar. It's the hormone that kicks into high gear when you perceive danger and prepares you to fight or flee which is very useful and important when you're trying to outrun a bear and not die. But when you're stuck in fight or flight day in and day out, and all you're doing is trying to live your life, it can cause a whole host of problems. Estrogen has a hand in cortisol regulation, but low estrogen in menopause often results in climbing cortisol levels, which further deplete estrogen. This low estrogen, high cortisol cycle is a player in several of the menopause changes that so many of us struggle with. I'm going to list seven and then talk about what you can do to lower cortisol levels and improve your health. I want to start with one of the most noticeable, frustrating, and upsetting shifts related to high cortisol in midlife. Stubborn weight gain around the middle. That spare tire that appeared overnight and will not budge. Chronically high cortisol messes with your metabolism, insulin levels, hunger and satiety hormones, and cravings for fatty, sugary foods, and makes packing on the belly and visceral fat extremely easy and taking it back off a constant struggle. The next unwanted change caused in part by high cortisol is anxiety. Low estrogen affects serotonin levels, making you more prone to anxiety, but its effects on cortisol also play a role. As I mentioned earlier, short bursts of high cortisol triggering a stress response are crucial for protecting you from danger. But when it remains elevated long term, generalized anxiety can result. Unusually high spikes of cortisol in the morning are also very common in menopause, causing very disturbing morning anxiety and panic attacks. Not a great way to wake out of a sound sleep. The third symptom is poor sleep. Many of you likely already experienced the disabling insomnia that often accompanies menopause, and cortisol has a role in that. Melatonin, which helps control the sleep cycle, has a relationship with cortisol. When melatonin is high in preparation for sleep, cortisol is low. When cortisol rises to wake you in the morning, melatonin decreases. Chronically high levels of cortisol in midlife can and often do cause a disruption in the normal circadian rhythm, leading to issues falling asleep and staying asleep. Gut problems are number four. Cortisol affects both the microbiome and general digestion. When you're in fight or flight mode, all energy goes to those areas of the body essential to ensure your survival, like your arms, legs, heart, and lungs, and shuts down all non-essential functions to use that energy. One of those unnecessary functions is digestion. So when cortisol is high, digestion suffers. Elevated cortisol can also cause inflammation in the digestive tract, throw off the balance between beneficial and harmful bacteria, and affect the gut lining, causing a leaky gut. Next is insulin resistance and blood sugar imbalance. Cortisol raises blood sugar and inhibits insulin to provide immediate energy, which is extremely useful when you're running for your life but chronically high cortisol can cause continuously high blood sugar and render the cells resistant to insulin. Number six is a lowered immune system. When cortisol powers down all non-essential functions to send all available energy to important body systems to deal with a perceived threat, some immune functions, unfortunately, are on that unimportant list. Also, high cortisol increases inflammation and decreases the production of white blood cells, so long periods of high cortisol can leave you much more susceptible to illness. Number seven is brain fog and mood and memory issues. High cortisol can affect the brain. 
the amygdala, hippocampus, and prefrontal cortex especially, which control memory, emotions, learning, and decision making. So when cortisol is chronically high in menopause, symptoms like brain fog, depression, and unstable moods are much more likely. Elevated cortisol is common in menopause, and as you've just heard, can contribute to several of the well-known symptoms that many of us struggle with in midlife. But there are things you can do to bring cortisol back down to functional levels. Number one, exercise can help reduce stress, improve health, and reduce cortisol levels. But please remember, more is not better in menopause. Over-exercising can stress the body out and jack up cortisol rather than reducing it. Number two, diet matters. Chronic inflammation will cause high cortisol levels, so eat an anti-inflammatory diet. Focus on whole foods and ditch the sugar and the processed foods. Sleep is number three. It is four levels of messed up when cortisol is high, I know, but finding ways to get adequate sleep will help bring cortisol back down to functional levels. Sleep is an essential function and insomnia can put a huge burden on the body and cause cortisol levels to rise. I have a video on 14 tips to sleep better that may help. Number four, reduce anxiety and stress as much as you possibly can. This will look different for all of you, but might include things like yoga, meditation, walking away from toxic relationships, self-care routines, or a nice quiet walk. Finding ways to get your body out of constant emergency mode can go a long way in reducing cortisol levels. Next, fix your gut. Your brain and gut talk to each other. Mental health and gut health are connected, so if you want to lower stress and cortisol levels, building a healthy microbiome and dealing with a leaky gut are huge pieces of the puzzle. Fermented foods and pre, pro, and postbiotics are great ways to start healing the gut. Number six, limit coffee and alcohol. Coffee does have health benefits, but there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Alcohol falls into that moderation bucket as well. Excess consumption messes with sleep, anxiety, and mood and stresses the body, which is exactly what you don't want to do if you're trying to lower cortisol levels. Keep coffee and alcohol to a minimum. Next, laugh and enjoy yourself whenever you possibly can. Nothing reduces stress and heals the mind better and joy and laughter. Socialize, dance, watch a comedy with a friend, go on a trip or a shopping spree, whatever brings you peace and happiness. There are likely a list of other things that will help reduce cortisol levels that I have not mentioned. So if you have a helpful tip, share it in the comments. I wish you all health, happiness, and peace of body and mind, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.